Hello, fellow birders. My name is Dennis Kania. Today, we're going to review some basic bird identification skills. On the DuPage Birding Club Education Channel, we'll talk about all things bird related. And as I mentioned, today we'll be talking about some basic identification skills uh, that we can apply when we're out birding. So where do we all begin? When we're out trying to identify birds, the very first thing we should do is work on our birding identification skills before we even see birds. And the way to do that is to get your favorite field guide and take a look through all of the plates in that field guide and become familiar with all of the birds that could possibly be seen in your area. So that means you know looking at what colors and patterns and, and bird shapes you might encounter. You know, if you, if you have never even looked through a field guide and the first time you see a bird, you, know, you can easily be confused and not know where to begin. But if at least you've, you've looked through a field guide and you know what the possibilities are, you've already have started to work on that identification. Most field guides will have some kind of a roadmap at the very beginning of the field guide that shows you all the different bird parts that you should be taking uh, into consideration in your identification. And so getting used to doing that and applying those different field marks and knowing how to interpret feather tracks um, is, a, is an important step. So you'll start to recognize um, some of the features that you should be paying attention to. And uh, as you do that, you're going to have a better understanding of um, plumage variations uh, due to feather wear or molt. Uh, or just unusual birds that maybe are missing a couple of feathers or something. It'll all start to make a little more sense if you have that roadmap in the back of your mind. And that foundation is going to be very useful to you down the road as you become familiar with more complex bird groups such as sparrows or shorebirds or gulls. And it'll be very useful in looking at some of the finer points. And you'll understand that those finer points exist because you've already taken into account uh, some of the features that are listed in these um, bird topography maps. But we can start with some general impressions when we see a bird for the first time. And one of the things that you can consider is the relative size of the bird. And assuming you have some familiarity with a few birds, uh, we might already know what a house sparrow is or an American robin or an American crow. And you can kind of use those as a gauge for uh, determining size. So you can think about the bird as being either sparrow size or robin size or crow size and kind of fit things in in, in that way. And that'll give you a little head start on some of the things you should be looking at in the field guide as far as uh, various species. Another thing that you should be looking at as far as general impressions would be the structure of the bill and the bill color. Quite often when I'm talking to birders and they're just trying to describe a bird to me, they never say anything at all about the bill. And I think it's very important to take the, the bill shape into consideration. So just as some examples here that I, I've put together, we have rose-breasted grosbeak, and it has a very, very heavy finch-like bill. Um, here's a chipping sparrow that also has a finch-like bill, but it's much finer in comparison to that grosbeak. And we have a thrasher here that has a very long bill and with a slightly decurved upper colon or this upper edge of the bill. So um, some of those features will help you to identify what group of birds you should be looking at. Uh, here's a marsh wren, and it also has a little curvature to its bill, but it's a much smaller bill than what we're looking at on that thrasher. Uh, I threw in a couple of woodpeckers here as an example. These are two species, hairy and downy woodpecker that look very, very similar, but there is a difference in their, their bill size. So it's important to take that into consideration when you're trying to ID these birds. You can see this is a much longer bill compared to the one on the downy woodpecker. And woodpecker bills in general are going to uh, look just like this. They're usually very pointed, kind of blunt at the end, but very straight looking bills. Uh, sometimes birders uh, have some confusion on whether or not they're looking at vireos versus warblers. And so I put that example in here and you can see that a, a typical uh, vireo bill is much heavier looking, um, very stout and chunky looking compared to a warbler bill. And so that'd be one thing you could look at to help separate those and, and start to understand that uh, you should be on the plates where the vireos are versus the plates where the warblers are. And then lastly, I, I threw in uh, several uh, waterfowl here. And you can see that you know, not all ducks are 
designed equally. So you know, there's a difference in all of these bill shapes. So it's important to you know, pay attention to just the various formats of these bills, the structure that you see. It'll be very useful down the road. <clears throat> so another thing that you can look at is the overall body structure. And in doing that, uh, you're looking at just overall appearances of the bird. Uh, here's an example of a morning dove, and you can see it looks very long-tailed. Uh, you can see that the body looks rather chunky, and it looks very small-headed. It looks like the head is too small for the body. So that's something that you might notice um, you know, when you see that bird. Or here's a blue jay, and you can see that this bird has a crest on it. So that would be a feature that maybe stands out and helps you to you know, recognize a structural feature that'll guide you as you start to go through your field guide. Here's a tree swallow. You can see it's a very streamlined bird. And you can see that the wings are very, very long. They're, they're actually as long or longer than reaching out on the tail here, a very, very small bill. So um, you know that would give you some clues on to where you should be looking in the field guide. Here's a, an example of a heron. I have a green heron here, which will have relatively long legs. Um, and so that along with this long bill will give you some clues that you should be looking in you know the section of the field guide where your herons are. Here's an eastern meadowlark. Um, it's quite different in structure than most of these other birds we've just talked about. You can see it's a very chunky bird, very, very rounded body, um, very, very pointy bill, very short tail and very short wings. And it's very unique compared to most other birds that we'll have in our field guide. And then I also put in an American goldfinch here, which is kind of like your typical generic um, perching bird. And you can see that it does have a finch type bill, um, but it's a, it's a rather um, well proportioned bird. Uh, the head looks like it fits the body. Uh, you can look down here at the end of the tail and you can see that the tail is notched. So that would be a structural feature that may be useful. But what you should train your eye to do is to find all the features on this bird that, um, that might be uh, an aid to you. And the more you look at birds, the more you're going to start to realize what some of those features are that you can use for separation. One thing that I don't see in field guides very often anymore is um, a page where it shows the silhouettes of birds. And this would be very useful in, in getting a general impression of birds. So um, as you go through here, uh, this is out of a Peterson field guide and Roger Torrey Peterson has actually given you a list of various bird families here and given you examples. And so it might pay to kind of go through that. And a lot of our field guides don't have a feature like this anymore. So you might want to dig out an old Peterson field guide or you can probably go online and, and find a, um, an image of this, this very uh, set, of, set of pages and I think it's a useful exercise to go through and try to, um, you know, guess what kind of bird you're looking at. You know, some of these are pretty easy. I mean, right away we know that's a morning dove here. Uh, this appears to be a grackle here. There's a kingfisher. This looks like a kestrel here. Maybe this is our blue jay. Actually, that might be a cardinal. This maybe is the blue jay over here. Obviously, a pheasant. We have a crow. We have quail down here. Uh, I believe this is our meadow lark. So you can go on and on and on and, and try and figure out what some of these birds are. And that would be a very useful exercise. The more you practice doing these things, the better off you're going to be when you do get to that point where you, you want to try and identify a bird. So a few other things that we should be thinking about when we see a bird is uh, color patterns. You know, where, where are you seeing the various colors? Uh, can make note of those colors and then where they are on the on the body of the bird. So on an oriole, we can see that there's a lot of orange underneath here. There's actually some orange on the back. There's actually some orange in the tail. So you want to make note of that and not just say that I saw a black and orange bird. Um, it could be confused with something else. So take careful note of you know where you're seeing the various colors on the bird. So here's where the black is, is concentrated on the head and the upper back and the upper part of the tail. The wing itself is black with, with some white markings in it. So you'd want to make note of all of that. Here's a yellow rumped warbler. And in this case, uh, we have a lot of black streaking on a white breast. And then we have a big splash of yellow here in the upper flank. Uh, you can't see much of the back of the bird here, but we can see it's kind of slate colored on the back and on the back of the head and all the way up into the crown area and pay attention to what those, the features are in the face. And once again, you know, pay attention to those bills. Eastern Bluebird, um, you can see it's all blue on the back here, but you know, there's, a, there's a red or kind of a rusty color on the front, but where is that end? And does it, you, know, you can see here, it actually goes down onto the flanks of the bird. So make note of all of that, because when you go into your field guide and start to search through various candidates, 
some of this information is going to end up being very useful to you. Here's another example of a red-bellied woodpecker, and you can see that it has really a lot of barring on the back here, and that barring goes all the way into the wings, um, pretty much a, a plain gray face, and then all this red that starts out at the forecrown and runs all the way across the crown of the head and all the way onto the nape. And so you want to make note of you know, where you do see that red. Here's another example of a few birds. Now these are all kind of reddish colored birds and they all have some black on them in one place or another. So it's important to make note of where you're seeing the various colors. Uh, in the case of the cardinal, the black is confined to, you know, around the, around the bill and around the eye. Uh, quite different situation here with the scarlet tanager. And you can see that the black is here in the wing. So uh, I can go on and on here uh, and talk about all these different examples, but it's up to you, you know, if you, as you look at these things, you know, figure out where you're seeing the various colors and, and, and record that in your mind. So when you do go to a field guide, you can help um, separate certain species out and eliminate you know, possible birds and, and finally narrow it down to the bird that you're looking for. And another thing you can look for is uh, bird behavior. And so what is the bird doing uh, may be a clue to what, uh, what species you're looking at. Quite often uh, we'll see nut hatches uh, and we have several nut hatches in the country, two of them in our area. We have red-breasted nuthatch and we have white-breasted nuthatch. Um, but it's the only species really that you're going to see going clinging to the tree and either climbing up, upward on the tree or actually downward on the tree. Um, so nuthatches are the ones that can be going down, down on the tree. And so if you saw that right away, you know that you're, you're dealing with a nuthatch. Uh, as an example, I have a, an American red star here. This is a bird that we mostly see in migration. Uh, on rare occasion, they do breed in the county. But you'll see that when this bird is foraging, it likes to fan that tail out. And so that could be a key. Even if you don't have binoculars and you see these little warblers dancing around in the trees above you, and you see this bird with its tail all flared out, you know, it's a good, good chance that you're looking at a red start. Eastern Phoebe likes to bob its tail. So um, when it lands on a perch, it'll, it'll kind of like raise its tail up and then drop it, raise and drop, raise and drop, and it'll keep doing that a bit. So that would be a clue that um, you're perhaps looking at an Eastern Phoebe. There are other birds that do that as well, but not in this kind of color pattern. And blue grain ant catchers is another example, again, um, using their tail um, in a behavioral uh, way. And it's um, it actually likes to raise its tail a lot. And some of our wrens do that as well, but our wrens are not going to be in this coloration, this kind of slate color. And uh, this guy also has this white outer edge on the tail. So by looking at some behavioral uh, features, uh, that can also be a clue as to you know, what group of birds you're looking at. So some key takeaways for us is to know what birds are possible in your area. And again, that's you know, looking at the field guide and understanding what birds might be around. Uh, gain an understanding of bird topography. And we actually have a very good video in our collection that, that treats with that uh, subject. It's called Bird to Topography, and this is the link to that, um, to that video. And we'll talk all about in much greater detail the bird topography. Uh, try to gauge the relative size of the bird. Take note of the bill. And again, we have another video in our library, at the beak of the bird. And in that one, we'll go into much greater depth on uh, variations in, in uh, build structure on various bird families. Pay attention to that overall body structure, pay attention to overall color patterns, and, and take note of any behavior that you see. All of those things uh, will help you in identifying birds in the future. So thanks for taking the time to view this video, and hopefully we've given you some bird food for thought. And I hope you'll join us again in the future as we explore all things bird related.